NBC 15 News at 11 starts now. Now at 11, authorities are set to release more information today on Angela Gurton after her body was finally found last night in the Wisconsin River. Plus, was he and is he legally insane? That's the question regarding the movie theater shooter James Holmes. This week, a man who knew him will take the stand. And it's the last scheduled day for the legislature's budget committee. A look at the items from Governor Walker's budget taking center stage. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ashley Matthews. And I'm Christine Belport. It is finally Friday, so who really cares if it's raining, okay? We're here. Yeah. We and made our, it. Our ship's over in about... Mm, 30 minutes or so. What I'm talking about right there. Amy Carlson joins us now with a look at the very important weekend forecast. Amy. Well, of course, we've had the showers and thunderstorms that roll through a little bit earlier right now out of the airport. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies. The temperature, though, up to 73 degrees as winds have shifted to the south around 10 miles per hour. It's currently 74 in Beaver Dam at 72 in Mineral Point and 73 degrees in Lone Rock. We still have a good chance for showers and thunderstorms developing especially later this afternoon. Our high temperature up to 77 degrees. But after that, uh, heavier rainfall on the way overnight tonight. We'll talk about temperatures for your upcoming weekend in just a bit. Very good, Amy. Thank you. Happening today, a news conference is scheduled for one this afternoon after the body of a missing five-year-old girl was recovered from the Wisconsin River near Port Andrew. Angela Gurton's family reported the sad news last night. Port Andrew is roughly 16 miles west of Gotham, where Angela fell into the river April the 6th. Weeks of recovery efforts were hampered by poor visibility, high water, and strong currents. The Richland County Sheriff's Department tells us a citizen found her body just before six last night. Now we will be sending a crew to that news conference and we'll bring you the very latest during our afternoon newscasts. Also today, TV actor Dustin Diamond is testifying about what happened during a scuffle in a bar outside of Milwaukee. 38 year old Diamond, who played Screech in the 1990s show Saved by the Bell, is accused of stabbing a man on Christmas Day in Port Washington. Diamond has pleaded not guilty to recklessly endangering public safety. If convicted, Diamond could face up to 10 years in prison. In our continuing coverage, five people are in custody and one person is in critical condition after multiple shootings in Beloit led to a police chase in Illinois. Each shooting happened within 30 minutes of each other last night. There were two on the west side and one on the east side of Beloit. A suspect's vehicle was spotted across the border in Winnebago County, Illinois. When authorities pulled it over, some suspects tried to run but were caught. This morning, we learned the victim was shot in the chest. Officials say his injuries are non-life-threatening. Republican Senator Ron Johnson says he has a problem with the popular Lego movie. He told a local reporter with WIS Politics it's part of a propaganda effort to attack the rich and successful. And Johnson defends his position, saying the bad guy in the Lego movie is a heartless businessman intent on destroying the world for profit. He went on to say, and we're quoting here, that's done for a reason. They're starting that propaganda, and it's insidious. Johnson made a similar comment at an event earlier this month, which has been posted to YouTube. He is up for re-election in 2016. Former Senator Russ Feingold is the only Democrat challenging for his old seat. And by the way, we will be asking Senator Johnson about the uh, rematch between the two and some other issues when he joins NBC 15 News at 5 in the studio tonight. Well, at our state capitol today, it's the last scheduled day for our budget committee. Several big topics still need to be discussed in the governor's budget. Some of those include budget cuts to the UW system, Department of Natural Resources, and Department of Transportation issues as well. Do you have any construction work experience? If so, Dane County could use your help with a new project. The county is hosting a construction recruitment event today at the Labor Temple on the 1600 block of Park Street in Madison. They're looking for trained construction workers to help build their new Dane County East District campus. The event runs until 1 this afternoon, so you still have a little bit of time to get out there. Happening around the nation, more than 100 people had to be rescued from homes and cars overnight as flash floods swept across parts of Dallas. The Weather Channel's Dave Malkoff is in Dallas with more on the flooding. This underpass was the scene of a massive rescue effort overnight. 
the most rescues in, throughout the Dallas Fort Worth area that they have seen in five years. I'm going to bring you over here so you can just listen for a second. Listen to this sound. You hear that? That's the sound of Dallas drying out after a wild night of swift water rescues and people trapped in cars. This underpass, we couldn't even see the vehicles here when we first got here in the overnight hours. Now you can see there's at least six vehicles, including a fancy Mercedes sports car, completely covered in water. We could not see them. And the real dangerous situation was happening with this vehicle, this brand new BMW with Sam on inside. He couldn't get out of his vehicle because there was so much water around him. He couldn't push the doors open, so he actually had to, looks like a window's broken here. He actually had to get out through one of these windows by breaking them and also the, uh, sunroof is broken now i can see that the sunlight has come up he was very scared in there he got out didn't even have any pants on he just had shorts he didn't have any shoes because he lost it in all of this water he had to go over to the convenience store and call whoever he could his cousin eventually picked him up this was a terrible night for the city of dallas but luckily the office of emergency management has told us that there were no casualties in this so far and there was no major property damage except for these cars they will all be heading to the junkyard in dallas i'm dave malica from the weather channel back to you to the fifa scandal now a bomb threat was called in today during the meeting of soccer's international governing body in zurich journalists and other attendees gathered outside after the fifa congress paused for lunch for about 45 minutes earlier than expected. Now, the threat was called in to a Zurich-based newsroom. Police said no one was evacuated from the building where the meeting was being held, but participants were briefly kept out of the auditorium while officers conducted a search, which turned up nothing. Was James Holmes legally insane when he opened fire on movie patrons in Colorado? That is the question jurors must consider in Holmes' ongoing murder trial. This week, a mental health expert is testifying on his conversations with Holmes last year. Anna Cabrera has more. Now we're getting to the crux of the trial. Was James Holmes insane when he opened fire inside a crowded movie theater on July 20th of 2012? The judge in this case ordered two mental evaluations of Holmes before the trial to help answer that question. Now, the second evaluation just happened last year, performed by a Dr. William Reed at the Colorado Mental Health Institute. And he told jurors that he concluded Holmes was sane at the time of the shooting. He spent a total of nine sessions with Holmes, some 22 hours. It was all videotaped, and the prosecution just started to show some of that video to the jurors. In it, we hear Dr. Reed ask Holmes about his childhood, about his upbringing, about his relationship with his parents and how he was as a student. We haven't yet heard any questioning about the shooting itself, but I want to play you a clip where you hear Dr. Reed ask Holmes about his time in jail and about a visit by his parents. Listen. Emotional for them? Yeah. How did they show the emotion? Do you remember? Did sometimes moms break down a bit? when she was leaving, but she held up pretty good while the visit was annoying her. How about you? Did you get a tear in your eye? Nope. Did you ever get tears in your eye? Uh, yeah. Sometimes. What brings tears to your eyes sometimes? Uh, just regrets. Can you tell me a little more? Um, usually it's before I go to sleep. Regrets about? Uh, about the shooting. That video was from July 30th, 2014, so more than two years after the shooting. Also important to know that Dr. Reed told jurors Holmes was on medications at the time of their interview, that he was on an antidepressant as well as antipsychotic medication. And we do expect to see more of Holmes' mental evaluation when court resumes later this morning. And that was Anna Cabrera reporting.